What's up guys? Today we're going to cover an AIO that we haven't covered yet and before we did the Siren GD240. Now today as you've seen in the thumbnail and of course here we have the Team Group T-Force GD360 ARGB Siren AIO and we're going to give it some additional stress when we're benchmarking it because it's going to cool down AMD Ryzen 9 7900X and I'm quite curious what's it going to be about when we're talking about thermals and uh, similar stuff but of course I do like to hear the noise when it's pushing uh, the fans at maximum and will it be bearable in some sort of terms. Of course, when you're gaming, the processor won't be going that high in when we're talking about load and using the CPU, FPU, cache system memory in that terms and in that benchmark. But nevertheless, let's start from the beginning. We have a 360 AIO in full white. So the CPU block is white, the radiator is white and the fans are white. The addressable RGB on it is remarkable and you can daisy chain the fans even though you do have quite long cables I would say. Shame they didn't uh, make it like a daisy chain possibility with shorter cables and then use a certain extender to actually have one cable running out of the AIO. Now you have three cables for addressable RGB and three cables for PWM that have to go outside. But they kind of sorted it out with daisy chaining possibilities. With the addressable RGB lights and possibility with a splitter on a PWM header which is quite cool and I totally understand this is quite alright. Now the fans do have a nice T-Force logo on the front as you can see right here and the pump block top has an also T-Force logo right in the middle and it looks quite nice because the whole top is shine through so when you adjust the lights it shines really nicely all together so the logo inside actually sticks out quite nicely maybe with cameras and stuff like that you won't be able to see a perfect T-Force logo but when you're looking at it in real it's a completely different story so you have mounting mechanisms for AMD and for Intel where which includes Intel backplate for AMD AM5 and AM4 you're using the stock backplate and uh, front plastics that are used for mounting their stock coolers you have a tin pump located on the radiator so my advice would be basically to place the radiator on front because in this scenario when the radiator is on top just like I placed it the air bubbles could get inside the pump but if you place it on front and if the tubes are on top the air goes to the highest point which are the tubes and the top part of the radiator but I don't think this would affect the pump drastically in terms of having a pump running on the air instead of water so you would be quite alright if you place it on top if you want it perfect place it on front and you'll have even better fresh air coming from the outside on the front and giving you nice intake which would be quite amazing now we have a copper water block plate to increase heat dissipation which is obvious and of course uh, the direct contact of course between we have thermal paste but it's copper base that touches the IHS of your processor. Some standard specifications so it supports LGA 1700 and 1200 and all the other Intel sockets and of course AM5 and AM4. The dimensions of the radiator are 396 times 120 times 27. The speed of the pump goes up to 4000 RPMs. The noise of the pump is 22 decibels and even in full load I didn't hear the pump at all. So the fans dimensions are standard 120 times 120 times 25 4 pin PWM so you can regulate in BIOS all the curves and uh, depending on the temperature of the processor you can adjust everything perfectly. The speeds go from 600 to 2200 RPMs and the decibel noise which was heard goes up to 35.6 decibels in full speed. The tube length is 40 centimeters so you have a possibility to reroute the tubes as you wish if you decide to go 
crazy and place it on front tubes on the bottom and stuff like that but there is really no necessity on doing that because uh, I think uh, we can agree that placing it on top or on front if the tubes are on top it still works perfectly the only negative solution for the AAO to place a radiator is on the bottom of the power supply shroud if a case supports that but in this scenario as I stated I placed it on top the fans are creating an outtake through the radiator and we have a 7900X on the motherboard, so yeah. The thermals, AIDA64 Extreme Edition, ticked CPU, FPU, cache system, memory and GPU. Since this is actually the first time you'll see and of course I swapped the uh, old RTX with the new one. So we have the RTX 4070 Ti, which in this scenario it doesn't mean that much, but just to give you some heads up, when I tested, of course it impacts the CPU temperature because of the load. It kind of acts a bit differently. So the RTX 4070 Ti Supreme X was actually quite good with 65 degrees Celsius and it stayed there constantly during the whole benchmark of 15 to 20 minutes. The CPU went up to 79 and eventually had some peaks up to 85 degrees Celsius, which is quite all right because it kind of does happen. It really shouldn't be anything strange. And these new CPUs, as already stated in my 7900X review, thermals and benchmarks, it kind of goes a bit higher with thermals. But in that video, I tested it with Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 240 addressable RGB, which has a thicker radiator than the T-Force one. That one actually held 7900X at the same temperature because the thicker radiator of Arctic actually kind of performs almost the same as a 360 radiator. So, in that terms, Team Group T-Force GD360E addressable RGB Siren performs outstanding when we're talking about 7900X. The higher temperatures are something new that we have to be used to with the new gen on AM5 processors and of course the Intel Core uh, 13 generation processor. So that's quite normal, unfortunately, but yeah. So the GD360E performs outstanding and if we had, and if I had past generation processors like something on AM4 platforms or even 1200 or 11.5x some of those processors to test them out the temperatures would be really low so yeah there's that I would definitely recommend going with this one if you're deciding should I go with team group T4 or should I go with somebody else that is in the same price range category or if you're deciding should I go with a 240 with a thicker radiator or should I go with a 360 that is slim or anything similar to that there's your answer, it cools down 7900X properly and you won't have any problems because after all they uh, did state it goes up to 95 and can be stable at that temperature. So that's a topic for a different story but I'll leave it for some other time. In the meantime, check out the links below for the Team Group T-Force GD360E ARGB Siren AIO. Uh, I'll place the link for the white version and for the black version as well so you can check out both and maybe just combine with what fits inside your build. If you have a white case you're going to go with a white one. If you have a black case you're going to go with a black version and maybe monochromatic. I don't know. It's up to you guys to decide what to do. And finally don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future content. It means a lot and I really do appreciate every single sub. So thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.